Have you booked that trip to Ireland yet? Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial, and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian-style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. Founded in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1702, but lost on a bet on a horse race in Deauville, France, 1918. Sullivan's was re-established a few years ago by direct descendants of two great Kilkenny brewing families, the Smithicks and the Sullivans. We're about to embark on our own journey across the United Kingdom. But this time, we won't bet the brewery. <laughs> Sullivan's. Brewing is in our blood. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Hi everyone and welcome to the show. This week Thomas McBride Jr. will be singing a song about his late father Big Tom. We'll be visiting the Whitaker Museum and Art Gallery in Rosendale for Aideen Barry's museum show. Now Nathan Carter has just released his brand new song called Keg of Brandy and he'll be performing that on the show later on. But first the Irish government is paying compensation to people who have spent more than six months in the mother and baby homes and county homes. We went along to the Irish World Heritage Centre in Manchester to meet with Maeve McDade and Patrick Rogers to find out some more information about this. Maeve, can you tell me a little bit about your job? Yeah, certainly. So I am the mother and baby and county home uh, programme coordinator. I work across the Freya Partnership, which is Irish Community Care based in Liverpool. I do working across um, the North West, um, that's Leeds Irish Health and Homes and Manchester Irish Community Care, um, which is why we're here today at the Irish World Heritage Centre in Manchester to let people know about the Mother and Baby and County Home Redress Scheme that the government will be opening up a wee bit later in the year. Um, and it'll be my role to help people access the scheme and also to provide some advocacy and support um, for them. Um, yeah, just to kind of, you know, let them know that the Irish community in Britain is, is very much supporting them in their journey to some sort of redress. 
And of course, it's vitally important that you get the word out there now, right across the country, really, uh, to let people know what's happening. No, absolutely. And, you know, there are people working in the Midlands as well. There are people working in London. There's a national coordination committee who are, you know, working so that we can provide a fairly cohesive um, service across across England at the minute um, is where we're all based. Um, we do anticipate, obviously, that there will be eligible people in Scotland and Wales as well. So we're just going to see what the numbers on the ground are like once the scheme is opened. But yeah, certainly um, working to engage people across the, the whole of England. There's many people across uh, the north of Britain and Britain indeed who lived in a mother and baby or a county home in Ireland and may be able to access the payment scheme that's being set up by the Irish government. So the more we get the message out that people can access the scheme, what the eligibility for the scheme is, the better it is for the community because they can then uh, assess whether they wish to apply for it or whether they're eligible for apply, to apply for it and know where to go get support to make that application because it, it, it is a difficult thing to do. It can be quite a distressing thing for people and we want people to know that they'll be offered free confidential advice if, if, they, if they so desire. And of course it's vitally important that the people that were here today, that they bring that message home and maybe tell friends or people that they think may be affected. We're a cog in this. We are a way of getting the information out there but ultimately not everyone comes to Irish community care so the more people that know about it the more that they can spread the word about it that they can spread the word where people can access support what the basis of the scheme is and then if people have a general inquiry about it they can always contact us we can give them further information and then we can tell them what they will need to do to apply or if they're eligible to apply they can contact us on 0161 205 9105 or they can email us at headoffice at irishcommunitycare.com Of course Irish Community Care Manchester you cover a wide spectrum of items including repatriation to Ireland and uh, you know looking after the gravestones here of people that is unknown uh, of Irish people. Yeah so the Graves Project was set up many years ago in order to uh, allow Irish people a dignified burial who maybe didn't have anyone else close to them uh, who'd be able to facilitate that. So that's a real important project that there should be uh, dignity in death as well as in life. We run three groups across Manchester, uh, one at St Kentigan's on a Monday that starts at 12 o'clock and one at St Mary's in Leventum that starts at 12 and one up here at the Irish World Heritage Centre that also starts at 12. They run for about two and a half hours and the main point of them is to reduce social isolation amongst the Irish community in Manchester. Um, so we get about 120 people in across the groups uh, throughout, the, throughout the week. They run every week and they're a real great call. Uh, a real great source of crack, a real great source of laughter. There's always music goes on, you know, we've got a raffle, we've got bingo. It's always free for people to come up to as well, so it's a real central part of the Irish community in Manchester. Of course, you've worked really hard since COVID to get people back because not everybody is kind of uh, relaxed enough yet, maybe, to come out. But I have to say, all your groups are well supported now. Yes, they're supported by uh, our staff and of course by our volunteers and we've taken several measures to make sure that, that they're COVID um, compliant and we work and make, we try and ensure that everyone who comes to the group feels as safe as possible and feels as comfortable as possible that they are going to come enjoy themselves, remain healthy and then come back the following week. So it's a real big part of our organisation that people get get ongoing support week after week and they feel part of a community organisation and part of the wider community. We've had an allotment for quite some time in the Leventum area of Manchester and it's a great place for people to go who want to get a wee bit of fresh air, a wee bit of exercise and where they can grow plants, grow vegetables and then vegetables once they're grown they get donated to places like the Inspire uh, Centre in Leventum so that they can go further into the local community so it's a real uh, it's a real crossover between various different projects in uh, in Leventum area. Something that's particularly interesting for you know the role of the Irish community in Britain is that there was um, talks and dialogue with um, survivors and former residents in Ireland, but maybe necessarily that the experience of those in the diaspora wasn't 
um, necessarily taken on board. So we're really ambitious to try and make sure that those experiences from both the people who are directly affected and their wider family are, you know, are being heard and being listened to in the, in the process of, um, you know, what redress might look like for them and how the government can best support them, even though they're not living in Ireland anymore. The actual government website has um, a very good uh, kind of summary report of what the actual payment scheme is about and how they've got to that point. But I would definitely encourage people to follow survivor-led groups and uh, community organisations in their, you know, their cities and towns. And um, I'd say at this point, the wider Irish community are aware that the scheme is opening later in the year and will be able to signpost. If they can't directly support people, they will at the very least be able to signpost people towards where they can uh, best get help. Some people may not think they're affected, but it's no harm to come and ask anyway. And if you don't qualify, you don't qualify. No, absolutely. And, you know, even if they're not eligible for this specific scheme, we would still like to talk to people about their experiences. You know, we haven't drawn the terms of the payments scheme we, you know we've taken guidance from the Irish government on who's eligible but certainly as community organizations we want to work with everyone in our community you know regardless of if they're eligible for this particular scheme or not so certainly come and get involved you know there are other you know fantastic work that's being done with these different organizations you know um, advocacy advice welfare health lots of um, different ways that we can support people if not directly through this scheme it's a very sad topic and but it's something that hopefully you know at least we can um, provide support in raising awareness of the kind of injustices that we're done. So yes, do keep in touch and thank you so much for your time uh, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. If you'd like some more information about this compensation, the contact details are on the screen now. Now it's just over four years ago since Big Tom McBride sadly passed away, but his memory and his music still lives on. Now we're going to play you a lovely song from his son, Thomas McBride Jr. called My Father Was Big Tom. Yes, my father was Big Tom, but now sadly he has gone. He'll never sing upon the stage again. So much joy he did bring, he will always be the king. But his voice and her memories will remain. We were brought up on a farm It didn't do us any harm But music always was a way of life There was Ashley and Siobhan And me and Dermot sang a song And my mother rose, she was his darling wife Yes, my father was big tough But now sadly he has gone He'll never sing upon the stage again So much joy he did bring He will always be the king But his voice and her memories will remain He was a legend and a star Known by many near and far But he always kept his feet firm on the ground He was a very modest man Happy on his farm and land And on a Monday in the cabin he'd be found Yes, my father was big tough But now sadly he has gone He'll never sing upon the stage again so much joy he did bring He will always be the king But his voice and her memories will remain Yes, my father was big tough But now sadly he has gone He'll never sing upon the stage again So much joy he did bring He will always be the king But his voice and our memories will remain So much joy he did bring He will always be the king But his voice and our memories will remain Yes, his voice and our memories will remain
What a lovely song, all about Big Tom and his family. We hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to take a break and we'll be back with you very shortly. Have you booked that trip to Ireland yet? Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial, and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Founded in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1702, but lost on a bet on a horse race in Deauville, France, 1918. Sullivan's was re-established a few years ago by direct descendants of two great Kilkenny brewing families, the Smithicks and the Sullivans. We're about to embark on our own journey across the United Kingdom. But this time, we won't bet the brewery. <laughs> Sullivan's. Brewing is in our blood. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Welcome back. Now we're off to the Whitaker Museum and Art Gallery in Rosendale for Aideen Barry's Museum Show. So the title of the show is called For She Is Always Creeping, which is a line from Charlotte Perkins Gilman's The Yellow Wallpaper, which was written in 1896. And it's a gothic novella, and it's a story about a woman who's suffering from postnatal depression. That's what we would call it today. And she is locked away and prescribed a rest cure, which was a kind of a medical quackery of the day, where they locked women away in rooms with no stimulation. So she's not allowed to have any kind of sensory stimulation. And all that's there for her to get distracted by is this mottled yellow wallpaper, which is all over the room. And over the course of her, um, I suppose, rest cure treatment, she starts to see something in the wallpaper and it re reveals itself as another woman who is creeping and there's a whole other world that's trying to lure her in beyond the wallpaper. I'm a visual artist, I'm from Cork, I live in Tipperary, uh, I, but my practice has become more and more international, so I'm now showing my work all over the world, which is a really great honour and an amazing privilege. 
uh, and I'm really aware of that. So when I am showing all around the world, it's really important for me to show my work in spaces that are freely accessible to the public. Because I guess I am, like a lot of people in this community here, from a working class background, and I like to make sure that my work is accessible to many audiences. So it's a really great honour to show this work here and to work with the amazing staff and volunteers of the Whitaker. So I'm so grateful to be here. I was trying to think about making an installation that looked like it had slid from the walls onto the floor. And uh, so it's a drawing, it's a large drawing that's been turned into a wall kind of strict sticker or, or drawing. And it goes on the wall and on the floor. And then I have reanimated that drawing with animations and moving image. So it almost looks like the wallpaper is changing, that there's something just behind it. And it's like sucking you slowly and slowly into the work. And the piece is called Listen Liquid, the Syllables. And it's inspired by a p piece of poetry by the Irish um, poet, Dearen Lee Griffa, who I've collaborated with in the past. Aideen is an incredible Irish artist um, based in Ireland but she has an international profile. She shows her work all over the world so it's um, really quite something for us to get her here with us um, at the Whitaker and it's an incredible show as you've seen, very unusual, suits the Whitaker very very well. Um, it's been days of installing the show, a lot of work but we're really really pleased with the outcome. The Whitaker is an amazing museum and art gallery and we're based here in Rottenstall in the Rossendale Valley and we reopened um, not that long ago now um, after a huge investment from Heritage Lottery uh, which enabled us to almost double in size so we have contemporary art galleries, we have our traditional museum spaces and we show our collections of natural history and social history and so on. We we have um, a huge displays of taxidermy and we have two permanent um, contemporary gallery spaces. So we've a really unusual and interesting mix on show all the time. You've also got an exhibition of Michael Davitt. Absolutely. Well, Michael is a hugely important figure um, here. As you know, he grew up here um, just down the road in Haslingdon and worked in one of the local mills here. We have reference to him upstairs in our um, Valley Past um, gallery and we have a portrait of him permanently on the wall to recognise him and the incredible life and, and work that he did here and in Ireland and around the world. Now a visit to the Whitaker is like a day out because there's so much to see and of course you can round it off with a, a lovely meal in your cafe. Absolutely, yes. But we're in a beautiful location here. Um, we're right in the middle of Whitaker Park, so we're surrounded by beautiful landscape in front and behind the building. And so, yes, we have a beautiful cafe, restaurant area, and uh, yeah, plenty of activities and things going on all of the time. So we are open um, 10 till 4, Wednesday through till Sunday, and we are open late night on a Thursday. And also, you can come and have drinks in the bar and come and eat with us late on Friday as well. I suppose I'm kind of an unapologetic feminist, so a lot of my work is about using myself in the work. So I'm in front mm. of and behind the camera at the same time. And I manifest these kind of behaviours, these creeping kind of behaviours in my work. One of the films downstairs, Possession, I'm kind of sliding along the floor, cutting the grass, or I'm eating mounds of cake. And these are kind of films that are talking about things like dark subject matter, like mental illness and othering, but actually I use a lot of humour, almost Samuel Beckettian kind of humour in my work. I baked for seven days to make that scene where it looks like she's sucking up all of the, the cakes. And then I also made all the foleys or all the sound effects using my body, so that's me making those sound effects. I would quite describe myself as quite eccentric, and uh, a lot of people uh, would be kind of aware about how I use like the kind of madness 
in, as a kind of a methodology in how I make my work. So I've just directed a feature film where I collaborated with a thousand Lithuanian citizens in the city of Konas, Lithuania. So that film took two solid years of living between Ireland and Lithuania to make and, and it's actually getting its North of England premiere by being shown here in the Whitaker. So that's also going to be shown in the stable cinema. I have a big solo show in Paris at the Centre Cultural Irlandais, which is the Irish Cultural Centre in Paris. Then I have a show in Bilbao, then I have a show in Lithuania, then my film is touring film festivals all over the world, so it's going to Argentina, it's going to California. And then I'm off to live in New York for the first part of next year on a big uh, residency with uh, upcoming shows there as well. I mean, I was very lucky to be invited here to the, the Whitaker and um, I was asked, you know, what are you working on right now? And I had actually spent nearly two years with kind of rolling lockdowns in Ireland. And over the course of those rolling lockdowns, I set myself a task so I wouldn't go mad of doing a drawing a day. And so the drawings that you see on the walls are those drawings which I made one day at a time. So the exhibition at the Whitaker, it runs from Saturday the 20th of August to the 15th of October. Aideen's a wonderful lady and I'm sure if you get yourselves along to the Whitaker Museum in Rosendale, you'll really enjoy her show. Now Nathan Carter has just released his brand new song. Here he is performing Keg of Brandy. I'm always drunk and I'm seldom sober A constant roving from town to town But I'm old now, my sporting's over so Molly store, won't you lay me down? Just lay my head on the keg of brandy. It is my fancy, I do declare. For while I'm drinking, I'm always thinking of lovely Molly from the county clan. But the ripest apple is soon as rotten, and the warmest love. As soon as cold And a young man's fancy Is soon forgotten So beware young maids Don't make so bold Just lay my head on A keg of brandy It is my fancy I do declare While I'm drinking I'm always thinking Of lovely Molly From the county clan And folly makes young men marry, makes them tarry a long, long day. What can't be cured, love, must be endured, love. So farewell, darling, I'm going away. Just lay my head on a keg of brandy, it is my fancy, I do declare. While I'm drinking, I'm always thinking of a lovely Molly From the lay my head on a keg of brandy It is my fancy, I do declare While I'm drinking, I'm always thinking Of a lovely Molly from the county fair While I'm drinking, I'm always thinking Of a lovely Molly from the county fair A lovely song from Nathan Carter and of course Nathan is back on the UK tour and if you'd like to know where he is going to be near you well then visit Nathan Carter's website and you get all the details there. 
Now that's about it for this week. Don't forget, Henry McGlade is back with us next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock from County Mayo with his show, and we are here at 7.30. Until then, take good care.